Hey YouTube, hope you're doing good today. I'm coming to you uh, from my stream because I knew I wasn't gonna wanna talk about this off stream. So hopefully you guys can enjoy whatever Twitch chat is going to be doing while this is going on. Anyway, point of the video today is I wanted to talk about analytical content. Um, there was a discussion, argument, whatever you wanna call it on Twitter um, over the weekend, over the last few days about whether it could work or not. And to kind of start things off, this was mainly something that came um, via fiction. I will enhance so you guys can see that a little more easily. He says, if the Melee community at large cared about actual analytical content, um, I would have made so much sick stuff by now. Honestly, just so hard to get motivated to do it when top player uses low tier and top player consumes hot sauce, etc. are just one million times more appreciated. So I think this is a sentiment that we have seen uh, in the community before. And um, it's not something that's been talked about a whole lot, though. Um, that has been coming. It's been in various places and... Um, I think some of you on YouTube might know that I was doing a series known as uh, Educational Unranked for about six months last year, and I ended up stopping it because it didn't seem like it was growing my channel, didn't seem like it was helping a lot, and um, I kind of wanted to switch to that because I saw that my own analysis wasn't doing as well. So I did talk to Fiction about that some. He did end up talking about me, which is part of the reason I wanted to clarify my position. My position is more nuanced than analytical content can't succeed, but it might depend on how you define it. But before you think it's just me and Fiction, I did also want to bring up um, that IBDW or Cody, as I will be referring to him throughout the rest of the video because IBDW is too long, um, he said, yeah, people who think analytical content is worth it, it isn't, it doesn't get views, lol. Most people think they want to get better, but realistically don't, and that's also fine, nothing wrong with it. So, so this is a different take, whereas fiction sounded a little more, you know, upset about it and everything like that. Cody was more that, um, this is, this is fine. This is not really a big deal. There's other ways to do content and, you know, it's, it is what it is. Um, some people say they want to get better, but they really don't. And so this is this is a different kind of way of looking at it. And I'm not here to tell you what's right or not, but I am here to tell you that it it's not just fiction or whoever else has this. There are some other people that might have that view too. But regardless, um, it was something interesting that I would like to point out as a bit of a different point before I talk about other uh, viewpoints on Twitter is I actually did a poll in my stream and... And I'll show you the results here. A little bit hard to see, so I'm going to zoom. Um, I asked, and I tried to make this as emotionally neutral as possible, how do you feel about analytical melee content? The results were, I like it, 76%. Um, it depends, 20%, and I don't like it, 4%. So if you add, it depends, which means they probably do like it. It just depends on the person or something like that. Then that would make 96% uh, of the results. But that is, you know, 24 responses total. I did have, I had a longer poll going before that with similar responses. I think we had about 50 or 60 responses, something like that. And the percentages were pretty much identical. Um, but I changed it to make it more emotionally neutral here. So I, and the poll did run for 10 minutes, but again, it's a short period of time in one live stream. Um, so worth keeping that in mind. But so it's an interesting thing. Is that just, is it just my stream? Because I'm someone that's known as more analytical. Do people, are, are Twitch power users and, and the people that are going to be here the ones that are going to like that stuff more? Well, we're going to try and get into it and we're going to uh, figure that out. But I did want to kind of say at the front so you don't have to watch this video, which I can already tell is probably going to be a little bit longer than I anticipated. Um, my view of the situation. Um, I believe that uh, high level content is not worth it. There aren't many high-level players, but entry-level content is super helpful. And if you can make content that can appeal to everyone, maybe mid-level or higher-level players can get something out of it. But if it can also appeal to lower-level new players, um, then that's what seems like that does the best, right? Because there are so there are so many players that, especially you know, the pyramid widens as it goes farther out. So there are going to be more people that are going to be able to use and appreciate, understand the information farther out. So that's kind of my view on, that's my high level view on it, but to kind of get into the weeds, 
um, I think we can kind of go into um, a little more of that. And we're going to kind of look at examples of people who say it works and how things have performed on a couple channels. And we're going to try and figure this out um, and, and pull what we can from uh, the information that we have available to us. So um, the first thing I wanted to do before we get into all that is I wanted to kind of say, well, what is analytical content? Is it just educational content? Is it analysis of games or sets or single interactions? Is it explaining how moves work or how moves work against other moves? Is it an overall strategy like how to play defensively with Fox? Um, are there how-tos like how to edge dash? You know, what's analytical and what's not? That's, that's a question that I think, um, that's something that I think is uh, not often um, fully talked about. And I think people have different understandings of what analytical content is. So I want you guys to kind of keep in mind that there might be a disparity when we're discussing what analytical content is. Some people might think it includes all educational content. Some people might think it just includes analysis. So that's something to kind of remember here, and that's going to be a key point moving forward. But I do think some of these things perform better than the others. So whether it's analysis or how-tos or strategies, right? I think some of these things perform better on YouTube than others. And so to kind of talk about what can work, I want to go to uh, Tove's tweet. Um, and so we're going to do that now. And he said, the only thing I'm going to say on this topic of people not liking analytical content is something that I'm surprised nobody brings up. The Irvine boys were pulling fat numbers on YouTube for years on SSBM tutorials with purely educational stuff presented by top players. So now we have a list of various things that are getting quite a bit of views on um, SSBM tutorials. And I thought this was an interesting point. And I wanted to kind of figure out, you know, what what is kind of uh, the reasoning for that. And, you know, Cope wasn't the only one. KJH also seemed to believe that analytical content, educational content could perform well too. And so I thought, okay, so there are, there are you know, influential members of the community that also believe it can do well. So it'd be fair to give this a look. And so I went to SSBM tutorials and I began looking and I sorted by most popular and I'll just show you, this is what it is by most popular. And there were a few things that kind of stood out to me, um, and, but I kind of, I will scroll through and there was a hiatus that they took. If you'll look by uh, newest, you'll notice that there's recent things, but then, uh, and then there's like a year ago, right? But then there's a jump to like four years ago, okay? So I kind of want you guys to keep that in mind while looking this over. That's going to be a point I'm going to bring up as well. But... Let's look at what is most successful here. And um, first thing I do want to point out is actually the older stuff did a lot better. And I think, you know, I think some people are going to say, well, that's just because it had more time to get views. And I really don't think, you know, something that is going to get, I don't know, let's go, let's go to something four months ago, the 16,000 views on how to beat any low tier or floaty in Smash Bros, um, this one right here, I don't think this one is going to particularly, you know, become 100,000 views or anything like that within a few years. Maybe it will if everyone watches this video and then goes and spite watches it or whatever, but I would be surprised is my point. And so I think there is something that might be a little bit different about the um, few years ago period, possibly a little bit, but I also kind of want to say that I want to talk about what's most popular. I want to talk about, you know, what is the content that is primarily being focused on in the most successful videos? And so I'm looking at things like how to be good at Super Smash Bros. You know, the first one here. Are you a Falco player? Noob mistakes. Are you a Marth player? And then there is a how to smash DI. There's a beginner's guide. Um, how to moonwalk. And we have a discussion video, is Fox really the best? There's a different one lower, is 20XX going to happen? Um, there's a tier list. And so you can kind of see um, there's a, there, are something, there are things that are a little more in depth as well, how to approach as Captain Falcon. But if you look at what is mostly going on here, how to short hop competitive melee for beginners part one, um, there largely are things that are geared towards newer players, and there are some things that are geared towards maybe a lot of players, how port priority can affect your game, um, 
Uh, let's see, there was another one I was looking at. Top six ways to get off the ledge with Falco. These things can be kind of interesting for a lot of players. They're like, well, I only know edge dash and double laser. What else is there, right? There could be um, some other interesting things that can happen for other people there. But again, if we're looking at the vast majority of what is succeeding here, we're looking at things geared towards beginners. Are you a Luigi player? L canceling, how to practice, how to DI. A lot of more entry uh, level things. And so I thought, okay, well, maybe this is unfair. What is the least popular stuff besides the newer stuff? Because there could there were things that were older that didn't do as well too, right? And there are um, specific tips from a different top player, Chic Tech Chasing Tips, or Lucky's Fox Techniques, um, Peach F Smash Tricks, and so I was kind of thinking that it almost, and I don't know if this is, and I, I couldn't find a good explanation in my mind for why this sort of thing may be the case. Maybe it's too particularly niche. Um, and, you know, but I could think tech chasing is something that a lot of sheiks would want to work on. So it's kind of a confusing uh, scenario there. But I did want to kind of, but I, what I did kind of notice is that these seemed like they were maybe a bit less polished in their delivery. And so I think, you know, Kira, who normally runs SSBM tutorials, very polished with his delivery, probably has a very robust script. And so I think there might be something to the way the videos are delivered that actually could be more important than who is delivering it. So I thought that was kind of interesting that it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, a strong player to deliver it, but how you deliver it could be pretty important. So I thought that was really interesting to kind of note, you know, what did and didn't work as well. Um, and again, you know, to kind of summarize the takeaways, the older things seem to do better. There was an explosion on YouTube with less channels in the golden age, which, or the platinum age, which was, you know, 2014, 2015-ish. And that's when this channel mostly um, uploaded its stuff. But um, the presentation seemed like it mattered a lot. And then the content that was geared more towards everyone seemed to matter a lot. So that kind of seemed to be in line with more of what I had been thinking, but this really reinforced that. But again, there were some surprising findings as well. And so I, but I, okay, so this is a channel that is more seen as a general guide channel. And what about a player that said, okay, well, I can do well if I do analytical content. And Tove actually said that um, his in-depth stuff did better. And the more uh, in-depth things he did, the better it would be. Um, and so this is uh, Toast channel, and I'm also sorted by most popular. And you will note that um, Omsa's theory on neutral game, which is the, the video that Tove talks about, he cites as um, the video that would be the biggest example of this, is, um, is done well. It's done well on his channel, and it's g blown up much faster than any of his other videos to get to this point. Maybe the the Daigo gets melee one would have blown up as quickly or something like that, but the AMSA one did great. Now, is this an anomaly? Because I was kind of surprised based on what I thought Topo uploaded, but you know, we're looking at Uncle Punch, AMSA needs our help, we're trying out Beyond Melee, how good is a Netplay Falco, talking about Ginger's tier list, the controller meta, um, teaching Melee to a brand new player. So there is some coaching that's going on there and people have talked about how Mango's coaching also is interesting to them. Um, GameCube controllers, streamers could save melee, history of Fox, controllers again. Um, we're talking about online meta, Scar interviewing chillin' dude, homie stocks. And so, you know, I had to go, and so I was looking for more things that I, because I don't think a lot of these are analytical in terms of how to play the game so much. Um, and so I was trying to look for another one. I, I, there's one that I think I had to go down a little bit for, but it um, it took me a while to find it. I th you know, the best method to L cancel in Melee, there was an L canceling discussion, which maybe is analytical, maybe not, depending on how you define it, but you can see that didn't do as well. That's down here, 11,000 views. And so I was kind of, but that might not be Toph's niche, right? Maybe he's like, okay, well, if I do it, it does as well. But if I look at some of the other videos that are, geared in that sort of way as well, it might not. And so do we take this one video, Omsa's Theory on Neutral Game, to be what we can do for every video? Or is this a bit of a unique scenario where um, where Omsa is 
you know, we're not able to always know what um, what AMSA was talking about, or this is just a unique sort of situation where, you know, everyone wants to know what AMSA has to say. And then because he streams, he streams in uh, Japanese time, we often don't get to hear about what he's saying and um, something like that. So it's a little unclear in that scenario, but we do see that it's able to succeed well. It's one of Toast's best performing videos, but some of his other stuff didn't do as well. So there's kind of a, you know, what do we do with this um, confusion there? And so um, if I wanted to draw any conclusion for what, uh, what I kind of talked about so far, I think I would say that it doesn't seem as easy to do now what it was before, um, given the look at SSPM tutorials history, but we can still say that the most successful stuff was, was for newer players or for you know, more of the general audience, lower and mid-level players. And that would still cover what TOEF did successfully, and that would also cover um, anything SSBM Tutorials has done successfully. So that's kind of what we're looking at when we look at specific channels. And yeah, so I think having, it's, but what, did TOEF, what does TOEF do well that a lot of other people might not do as well? Having a polished delivery, um, probably keeping it, probably being able to, um, communicate concepts in a really clear way. And then, you know, usually having occasional for everyone content, but maybe having a little bit more kind of hardcore content. Um, highly editing it, playing the algorithm with your title and thumbnail, as we can see a lot of Tove, you know, had the open mouth, arrows drawn, you know, whatever for the thumbnails, or we put the, we put the caps, caps lock in a few places in the title, that kind of stuff. Um, that stuff will make a difference for your video. And so you could see that he was also able to do that more, whereas people often criticize um, players, myself included in some of the stuff that I did in the past, for not playing the algorithm more, not making it easier to digest. Um, so all this being said, I think there's actually, and I'm kind of, you can see I'm kind of moving towards this. There's actually one more perspective I wanted to talk about here, and that's Slimes. If you don't know who Slime is, he's a Melee commentator, um, I, I don't want to say Ludwig's friend, it's weird, but if you do know Ludwig, he is, you know, he is very involved in Melee as well. Slime has commentated some big tournaments, he's commentated pools, he, you know, got a start in a lot of ways in Melee, did Beyond the Summit stuff, Slime on the scene, very good stuff, highly recommend you check it out. But his take about, uh, the situation, I think was also very deep and interesting. Um... He's quote retweeting someone that says, while we talk about content, all top players know how to do is make tier lists, recycle tour topics, and grind melee, and are too scared to go outside of their comfort zone because the viewership reflects that people don't give a heck about them outside of melee. So then Slime says he gets it. You just gotta be brave and make people care about you outside of melee. Takes a lot of work and personality. You get a baby head start because you have some diehard viewers, but it's just like anyone else trying to live the, gra the greasy content creator dream. So I think this take is interesting. Um, and I think it pushes us towards, uh, improving personality, becoming more strong content creators, which is something that we've been moving towards as a community for a while now. Brands like it more, uh, spectators and fans like it more. Um, it can bring more people into the game. It is a net benefit to the community. Um, and some people have to take risks or go outside their comfort zone to do it. And I think there are some principles in here that Slime has certainly learned from working with Ludwig and, and then certainly looking at Melee content creators as a contrast to make, make his uh, opinion known, to state how he feels. However, um, and this is something I kind of wanted to make a larger video about, but instead I'm going to put it here. I wish Melee players didn't have to become content creators. Um, this, is, this isn't really anyone's fault besides Nintendo's for not giving us money. Um, but this is something that we now have to do, work on these separate set of skills because we don't have enough for sponsors and there aren't um, other endemic uh, ways to get our brand out there that um, sponsors could push more and things like that. This is something that we kind of have to all take on for ourselves. Which So this is kind of like a semi-grassroots sort of thing here that we're still evolving into. And I also kind of think that it can be hard for a lot of Melee players to want to I guess we'll say spec into those skills. Uh, this is partly due to when you're grinding melee a whole lot, maybe you're spending all your day doing that, you're probably not working on 
learning more cultural things that you can use as references or working on your interpersonal skills and or talking to people a whole lot. You know, you're studying frame data or you're grinding or you're analyzing or whatever. And there aren't really resources to help people do this. There's not a course you can take that says, okay, well, this is how you do a content creator. This is, this is how you figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are. Um, this is where you can go to find an editor. You know, it's all, you've got to put, it's not really organized and you've got to really fumble your way through it. And um, all of that said, I think everyone isn't suited to learn or even do this. Um, some people can work more towards it and I think that's great, but not everyone's meant to be an entertainer. Some people want to play Melee because they want to play Melee. And I think that should be okay. I don't think we should come down on top players for not being entertaining because that's not everyone's job. Their, their job is to play Melee. Um, and maybe that's, and, and again, I'm not saying that we shouldn't focus on content creation. I think that's very valuable for us. But I also think, you know, it's a fairly large ask as well. So all that being said, I do think analytical and educational content can succeed. Um, but really, mostly educational content. Um, analytical content, as I define it, is something that's more analysis-driven, something more for higher-level players, and that I don't think can work. Maybe there is a way to work it. Maybe if you are doing hot sauce and you're drunk and you're talking about that one time you had a sandwich with scar and mango, maybe it does work. I don't know. But... Um, I think as long as you're doing stuff that works for everyone or newer players, um, I think that's I think that's great. And I think it can succeed. I think it needs good polish, good delivery, good script, good editing, playing the algorithm, um, good personality. But it can be done. These are things that can be worked on and improve everyone, even if you're not someone that's suited for this. Um, but I would like to also say, just to again say it, let's be fair and say that not everyone's suited to be a content creator and Let's not try and demand that of them if we can. Um, so in other words, I think educational content is worth it and awesome, but, uh, you know, maybe not everyone's thing. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. I am curious to hear uh, what you guys think. Do you consume analytical content regularly? Is there someone you'd like to see do more of it? Um, what's your favorite piece of analytical, analytical content out there? Let me know. I'm curious. I could learn more about it and maybe tailor my own stuff too. I do want to do more of it myself, but I uh, just wanted to focus on doing more discussion videos, a little bit simpler and uh, still fun for me. Um, so if there's something you want me to talk about, you could always let me know that too. I'll keep it in mind. But anyway, thank you guys for listening to this video. I know it had to have been a long one, but uh, I hope you stuck with me to the end and uh, appreciate you.